to another episode of Kicking Back. It's been a while, it's been a hot second, but we are back and better than ever. Uh, today I'm with Ollie and Jazz, um, the cool kickback team, and today we're just going to be having a little bit of a conversation, a very chill update about what we've been getting up to, any bits of theatre we've seen, any kind of creative bits we've been up to, so it's just going to be a very kind of informal little chat. So, um, guys, tell me what you've been up to. What What haven't we all been up to? I feel like we've all been living... Yeah, all been living little busy lives. Um, I I actually saw something the other day. I okay, so I've been in America for about eleven months now, and this was maybe the second bit of theatre that I've seen outside of my university. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've been a bit lazy. Um, and well, actually, I saw this because it was free. Um, always it good. was always good, always ideal. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's this lovely kind of collaboration that a lot of Bay Area theatres have, where basically a lot of them are kind of united in this fact that the, uh, they will offer comp, uh, comp tickets to the members of other theatres. So everyone's kind of giving each other free access to theatre if you're in that industry, because theatre is very expensive. Um, so I got to see The Wizard of Oz, which oh. was... Nice, a classic. A classic. It was it was surreal. Um, it was extremely gay, and it was really <laughs> good. Red Bull. Love to see it. Yeah, it was. It was. They really kind of emphasized a lot of kind of uh, queer culture, SF queer culture, Bay Area queer culture, um, mm-hmm. and that was in the design and the costuming and the performances. Like, um, like one of my favorite bits was that the Tin Man. They just gave him a leather daddy outfit. He had like, it was it was all in silver, but he had the fucking hat and the vest and the leather jacket, and they just turned the Tin Man into a leather leather daddy. Oh, insane! Did they do like the singing and dancing as well? Was it the whole mm-hmm. like? Oh. Yeah, all the singing and dancing. Um, the Wicked Witch of the West had this beautiful like drag outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it, it was like drag cowboy. Which was really cool. Oh my um, god, you know what that reminds me of? I saw Spongebob the musical recently, and um, the actor for Plankton was a drag queen as well, and the whole outfit was kind of like stylized to, to like match kind of the drag queen's kind of like style, and it was insane. It was incredible. Chef's kiss. Highly recommend it. I think it's still touring, so... So mm. there's actually a very reasonable reason why uh, you're kind of linking those two is because both uh, the Wizard of Oz, this production and the original Spongebob musical were the costuming and set design was done by David Zinn uh, um, yes yes, I remember I did a bit of research about that guy for my dissertation, yes, I know the dude like, yeah, terrifyingly talented human being so that's why I really wanted to go to it because it was like this idea mm-hmm. of like, oh my God, I could t- see like a David Zinn production in real life. Like that's incredible. So yeah. that was really spectacular. I really enjoyed that. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's iconic that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what have I seen? I saw, um, it was the ocean at the end of the lane. Um, oh. It was the oh. Neil Gaiman book adapted yeah. for stage. Oh my God. Like, actual chills there's a bit i won't spoil it because i think it's still touring um at the end of act one there's they use doors and the doors are used very well and it breaks your brain a little bit because it sort of incorporates like stage magic stage illusion um which i just love anyway but they used it so well and got the creepy side of things really well done um because yeah, I was speaking to some people before because I went to sit with my partner um, and we were speaking to some people before it and they were like, I don't know how they're going to manage to adapt this for the stage because it's quite out there as a concept and but it works really, really well. And yes, so go see that if you can. Um, I don't know where it's touring to or when it's touring to. Um, I was going to say, where did you where did you see it? It was at the Alex um, in Birmingham, um, mm. which was good. And then I was 
thinking about because I'm from Nottingham originally. I was thinking about going back to Notts because it was touring there, and I was like, yeah. "Hey, mum and dad, can um, <laughs> can, can we go try and finesse some theatre tickets?" But um, no, it was yeah, go see it. I rate that so much. I think you should see it again, honestly, because seeing a bit of theatre twice just mm. rates mm. much better. Like I, going back to SpongeBob, I've seen it twice now. <laughs> I saw it in Birmingham, and then my mates, we all loved it so much. They were like, "Do you want to go again in Manchester?" And we were like, "Yeah, why not?" So we went again in Manchester, and it was just so insane. Oh, both times, highly recommend because it was just oh. It was just such a feel good show because everyone that I've told, like outside of kind of like my friendship group, they've been like, oh, that's that's interesting. You're 22 years of age and you're seeing SpongeBob the musical. But it's such a good show for like it's such like a family show. Like you, mm-hmm. you, could, you could be 22 and go and see it. Like there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong. And the cast are all phenomenal. And they're still touring. Um, tempted to go a third time, but I'm going to hold back because I feel like I've got a lot of musicals lined up. Like I'm seeing Heather soon. I'm oh, seeing wow. Brokeback Mountain, the musical in London, which oh I'm so- God. That's a thing? <laughs> yeah. I, it's, mm. <laughs> it's, yeah not- it's an interesting concept because, I mean, you watch Brokeback and you're like, oh my God, this is emotionally devastating. Why would they want to turn it into a musical? Like it doesn't really make sense. Um, which is why uh, me and my mates were so intrigued. We're like, what is this going to be like? So, you know, I'll get back to you on that, um, how that goes, because <laughs> it could either be real good or um, real questionable. So we will soon find out. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. I mean, yeah. it might not be rough, but I mean, that's that's a big thing with kind of musical industry, isn't it? Or just like, hey, let's go to the uh, archives and take what you know what's what something we can add some music to like isn't that like uh wasn't that like a back to the future musical that was supposed to be a bit shit yeah, yeah no but like oh, i don't know i've heard like mixed things about that some people have been like they loved it because it was kind of camp but um mm. it's yeah i have heard mixed reviews some people loved yeah. it some people like it so um because it's jukebox musical people they're not too keen on the idea of a jukebox musical i don't think it's that bad because i mean you got mamma mia don't you so like you got all abba's music um but i guess it doesn't really work all the time yeah i think sometimes some of the best stuff i've seen has just been something i've been like oh yeah i'll just go see that randomly spur of the moment it's like because there's so much stuff out there like musicals and beyond musicals where it's like you know you you never know what you're going to find especially you know with like fringe coming up and you know like Mm. edinburgh and also the other fringes Mm -hmm. um one of the best things was like last year going to just going to fringe and then being like oh i'm just going to see this random thing and it was incredible that was one of the things it was we were locked in a room and it was just voices and I was like, I would never have seen that unless I some random person came up to, to me on the street and was like, see this? And I was like, all right. Um, but yeah, try just see new stuff. Yeah. 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 There's a really interesting thing I saw back in uh, March, maybe. Uh, it's at a venue here uh, called uh, The Audium. And the whole mm. point is, it's, yeah, it's kind of more of a live art space than a, a theatre space. Um, basically, you go into this room... Uh, you sit down in a circle and the space has about like, you know, uh, like 300 speakers set up. Wow. Um, and so it's like this pitch back room. There's no set decoration. There's no performance. There's no nothing. But it's these like he- extremely curated um, sound pieces that go on for like 20, 30 minutes at a time. And so it's like performance through audio and performance through the experience of like listening to audio in a surround environment. And that was really interesting. It was like fairly cheap as well. Um, I think it was like $20 for about like three or four of these like short 20 minute pieces. But I had such a weird experience with that because I just kind of sat there in the back and like it, it puts you at least from what I experienced, it like kind of put you in this like trance state. Like I was just there and I just kind of started sloping and my eyes started glazing over and like my mouth was open and I was just like, time just kind of stopped having meaning. Like, mm-hmm. like 20 minutes both felt like 20 hours. 
20 hours and two minutes. It was really surreal um, and like a really weird effect it has on you. So yeah, definitely some of those experimental stuff can be really fun. Yeah. I do really miss seeing a lot of experimental stuff. I feel like ever since I've moved um, away from Birmingham, I haven't gone to see as much of that. I feel like being in Birmingham, it was kind of at the center of it all really. Mm-hmm. Now being back in Northampton, you know, I'm only really going to the West End to see the occasional kind of like, you know, mainstream show. But, you know, I miss all the like the little shows, especially being at uni, like seeing all the um, shows the societies are putting on and stuff like that. I do kind of like Mm -hmm. uh, like hearing you guys talk about these experimental shows made me think of that. Yeah, definitely. I think putting stuff on at uni is a really good sort of opportunity because you can try more or less anything as long as it gets approved and there's a lot of Mm. freedom to sort of make mistakes and go wrong and you know like do you have that support network there you have that venue there a lot of it's quite easy to do like I remember the first thing I did at uni back in 2019 December 20 I'm old um (laughs) was I say that but it was it was called Thread Sands, and it was a four-hour durational piece using sand. And there was like a little sand pit in in the ground, um, and then there were like, these four lights shining on it. And it was me, and it was one other person, and we were writing, like tracing words from languages that have been sort of destroyed essentially by British colonialism and it was sort of that resurrecting and then sort of the overseer of the piece um, Mm. would take a rake and sort of reset the sand and move on to a different language and it was this space where people were just coming in and out and they would you know there was that space to sort of respect and engage with these sort of languages that have been lost um and sort of halfway through, there was a section where we did some Bhutto sort of movement um, mm-hmm. as well, sort of engaging with that side of things as well. And it was very, I remember coming to uni being like this fresh face fresher and I was like, oh. Um, and it was just a very different thing. I think pushing the boundaries of what, you know, what you do, what you see, what you engage with. Mm-hmm. you know, it makes you sort of a more rounded, creative person. Um, and I'm very thankful for that experience. And it sort of, I sort of jumped in the deep end with things and then um, stuff I've done afterwards, you know, you, you take little pieces from projects you do um, and ideas and things. And I think that's something I've done that's definitely stuck with me. Um, so yeah, do your own durational pieces, what I'd recommend. I think... I think Thread Sands was the second university production I saw. Mm. I remember I remember watching it. Um, mm. And yeah, it was also like, you know, I remember kind of coming into university as like, I like scripted work. I like scripts and traditional drama. And then I think it took me about two, sem- two semesters before I was like, I never want to do that again. I want to yeah. do the word shit. I want to get, yeah. I want to get funky. Mm-hmm. So I do get that. More fun though. You got to admit, haven't you? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I yeah, I like I like the kind of stuff that messes a bit more with form uh, and kind of tries to play with kind of the parameters of what a performance is. I think that's mm-hmm. the stuff that kind of ticks my brain a little bit more actively because it's like process uh, art. You know, is mm-hmm. I, I like you know I'm that weirdo that likes you know Rothko and abstract expressionism because again it's all about it's art centered around process and process is the thing that really activates me. Um, you know, when I'm watching a performance, my favorite bit is when I can, when the curtain like flies a little bit and you can see the like stage hands working in the back. So it's like, what are they doing and how are they doing it? And how, how is this being achieved? So I think live art and those kind of, yeah, more experimental stuff are really good at that and really good at kind of being a bit more con- deconstruction. Yeah. Yeah turn this into a bit of a promo uh mm. <laughs> haven't we a little bit uh <laughs> but uh no we love we love to see it um 
So kind of what else have uh, you guys been doing like creatively? Like, have you been, what have you been reading or like, what have you been, any movies or films that you've been watching or just any, any creative bits you want to share? Oh boy. Um, I mean, I have, so I have had a keyboard Mm -hmm. in my room for about three years. Um, I've only done some little bits on it. Um, but since I sort of finished for this year with my degree, I've sort of started to look into music theory and compose, not composing, like that's a big scary word, but like just figuring out how it works, like this thing I've had and how the notes interact with each other and sort of melodies and things and looking to sort of create my own composition-y bits. Um, it's... It's just the sort of thing when when you make something like I always have the fixation on it needs to be good it needs to be amazing like it needs to be the perfect thing but it's been nice just that like have a little noodle have a little you know learn of these things like if you want to sort of learn music or for a lot of skills things really there's so much just online like on YouTube for free people just telling you like all of these things and it's been really sort of useful, I guess, um, because, you know, I I don't think I'll ever like, you know, want a career in the music industry because that's got its own potholes. But, you know, just having a bit of fun with it um, and having these new skills is something that I've picked up the past sort of few weeks and it's been really fun. Um, not to my own home. Mm. No, cool. I can completely agree yeah but and just like learning a new skill is just a mm. fantastic way of kind of keeping your brain activated um how about you mia uh i was gonna say kind of building off of that props to you jazz for kind of keeping at it because i know how because i'm exactly the same i'll start something new and i'll be bad at it immediately and i'll be like ah oh, this sucks i'm gonna give up um so you know i appreciate how hard it is kind of just mm. like keep going even though it's a little messy at first so Hell yeah, uh, in full support of that. Um, Me at the minute. Um, I've been trying to dabble back into writing. I feel like I'm having the same problem where I get really excited about something. I start writing and then I get bored or I get like stuck at like a certain point. And then I'm like, well, on to the next. And I forget about it and I start a completely new project. And then I'm in like I've got like seven different unfinished projects. Um, so I am determined to try and finish at least one, but I have been kind of dabbling a little bit. Now I've kind of got all this um, free time since finishing uni, is trying to um, find out what to do with myself. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been good. I've been doing a lot of reading as well, which is fun because I feel like being at uni. I just didn't read at all because I was stressed twenty four seven, and now I've got through almost like. 25 books so far this year oh, like gosh. it's I've been on a bit of a readathon um because um my girlfriend went away to India for like two months and before she left she recommended me her favorite book series so I've been plowing through it but like there's like several different books in this series and they're not small books they're gigantic so it's been a bit of a challenge but they've been so fun and so good so it's been good to kind of get back into the swing of things I feel like I've reconnected with a bit of my old self because I used to love reading and I kind of missed um doing that a lot so it's nice to kind of have that bit of myself back and try and like get back into the swing of things Mm. yeah uh yeah I I kind of get that with the reading um but it's I've been trying to kind of get back into that and I, one of my big things is that I felt like I've been spending so much time just reading non-fiction or reading mm-hmm. kind of texts and stuff like that and it's like that's interesting to me and there's a like a you know there's a real life application of it which I really enjoy of like okay well what I learn here I can use in my career or this or that so Mm -hmm. that's kind of exciting but it's also like this is also just a bit too much like I need a story I need like something fun and bubbly and easy um so what I kind of started going back to like children's stories um because I was I was reading a really good collection of essays by uh Philip Pullman the the guy who wrote his dark materials 
And a lot of it was him talking about the importance of fables and fairy tales and children's stories and how, you know, some of the best, best written stories in the world are children's stories because of how they engage with, you know, message and archetypes and kind of just very exciting, very well paced and very interesting with also very poignant real world ap- mm-hmm. application messages. So I ended up reading The Secret Garden uh, for the first time. <laughs> And that film, uh, that book was actually really beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed that. Of just like, it made me a little bit homesick because so much of it is based around like, you know, English spring and English summer and, you know, how it looks like on like Yorkshire moors and stuff like that. And just like uh, everything blooming and like the fresh air and the kind of mud and rain being very beautiful. So that was a really good read. Um, I did need that. Wow. Yeah, I do. I do kind of back you on that. Children's stories are great. I feel like people are quick to dismiss them because they are obviously written for children. But I think, yeah, I completely agree. Some of the best kind of books out there are children's books. Like um, I recently got into Percy Jackson like the other year and I was like, how have I never read this before? Like I didn't really know. You never how read I- it. I never read it as a child. I was more of a Harry Potter I've kid. Or like, I got into Percy uh, Jackson uh. until <laughs> and it's changed my life like I, I was like I can't believe I didn't read this as a kid like I was a bit apprehensive going into it because I was like oh maybe I'm too old for it now I don't know but I I ate the whole series up in like a week or so like it was, it was mental yeah mm. agree. that's incredible god I learn new things about people every day wow <laughs> not a Percy chat honestly I love Percy Jackson the film's questionable well, but uh, we've got two disney plus series coming out next year oh my god yeah mm. which I, i'm incredibly excited about so excited i'm excited i don't have very high hopes for it though um no. one of the well, <laughs> rick's involved rick riordan the author He's oh involved. my god actual actual <laughs> author wow yeah author being involved and he said he's been really happy with the progress because he's been involved in writing the scripts and everything right. so he's has actual kind of like oversight this time whereas last time he wasn't involved at all mm. um so i've got faith for this adaption i really hope it's good it's so true yeah. i mean sort of latching onto tv shows um there's a couple of things that i'm very excited for i don't know if either of you have seen our flag means death oh, um, oh. gay wait, pirate show wait. oh my god i need to it's oh I've got a badge of Sneed on my bag. I love that man. <laughs> that is iconic. Oh my god. Obsessed. Mate. Oh. They're so lovely. Like, oh my god, Taika Waititi. Actual, like, mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> um that man touches turns to gold. Honestly, like Thor Ragnarok. And then you've got um you've got what we do in the shadows as mm-hmm. well just oh i cannot praise him enough like i just love everything he's in this is so true we love taika we're actually taika stands so this is us coming out to you as taika stands oh yeah um out now guys so true. um but yeah that's gonna be good and the second season of good omens as well that's the other thing that i'm excited for Mm -hmm. God, I'm so excited. And um, what we do in the shadows as well, like the Holy Trinity, yeah. the yeah. game. Yeah. I'm, so <laughs> I'm so excited. Yes. They are very exciting. Um, and I guess, circling back to book recs, um, there's a collection of short stories. Um, well, so one of the modules at uni that, because I do a creative writing degree alongside Kickback, um, and we did a unit on short stories and sort of creating them, how they work. There's a lot of different short stories out there. Um, mm. But there's a collection by uh, Raphael Bob Waxberg, who wrote Bojack Horseman and has written other things. Incredible mm. show as well. Um, it's called Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory. I believe it's a very long title. Um, but it's incredible he plays with form really well he plays with that so they're all sort of focused around love and different ways that that can be expressed there's one about two people it's it's about sort of two people getting married and that they live in sort of this alternate world where 
goat sacrifice is the thing you do at weddings and it's oh my god do we do we do we go for five goat sacrifices or eight? Oh my god, my my mum was like, if you do any less than ten, I won't come. Like all of that, and he incorporates that humour and oh, but yeah, um, that's something that I've been working my way through and highly recommend as well. Um, yeah, he's very talented, yeah. very jealous. Short stories are such a beautiful form. I uh, absolutely mm-hmm. love it because I I mean. I don't know, part of this is just because I get way too fidgety if a story is too long. Um, if a film is longer than three hours, I need yeah. a good reason for it. Like, I I, pro- I will say no to it by yeah. default, unless it's something like really magical. Um, and then if like theatre is over two hours, it's kind of the same thing of like, you need to give me a good explanation of yeah. why it's this long because I'm getting cranky and restless and like, this is not great. I will say um, Lord of the Rings is the exception. Lord of the Rings is an exception, one hundred percent. No, it deserves to be. It should. Lord of the Rings should be longer. It's not <laughs> long enough. Um, yeah, it's. But the thing is, that like, uh, I feel like you know, the death of so much stories is in the pacing. Mm-hmm. You know, writers not really knowing how to pace or not really knowing how to end things. And so I think that's kind of where short stories excel because usually they have very tight endings and they're very tight pacing. And so it's just like an experience of never being bored. Every single bit is engaging. So I always think it's just like one of the most like visceral and very effective forms of storytelling. Yeah, 100%. Um, So I keep keep going on about it, but... um, one of my short stories is being published in I was just two about weeks. And I was like, aren't you a published author now? No, Not yet. I'm almost a published author, which I'm so I'm so excited about. Um the publisher's gonna send over a book, um, I think just a week before release. So that'll be next week. Um, so I can read my own my own words on a on a on a page, and it's gonna be really cool. Um and I'm, yeah, it's just been like, cause you, you learn about sort of, you know, the, the process in, in quotes about, you know, edits and drafts and revisions and all of that. Um, but actually going through it has been quite an interesting experience and the publisher themselves are really lovely. Um, so it's been really nice, like having sort of this collaborative project that, you know, it was, there was a story I wrote for my course originally and I just sort of like put it aside, but then I was like, oh, I could send it somewhere. Um, and this is where we're at. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very exciting. I'm very excited. I can't, I can't wait to have my, my own book on my shelf and be like, I did that. Um, so incredible. That's such a big achievement. Congratulations. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I would like to write longer um but a lot so a lot of my sort of previous writing has been for stage or like spoken word so it's a lot of shorter stuff or more sort of dialogue heavy stuff mm-hmm. um so it's been very different writing in prose than you know this this sort of stuff that's meant to be performed essentially so you know i'm i'm very glad i'm doing this degree because it's sort of pushing my comfort zone and being like write in this form, write in this form. I did um, a, a collection of poems for my most recent assignment. I was like, oh, okay, because I, I didn't do poetry and now I'm, I do poetry and I'm like, okay. Um, but it's also, yeah, it's really good when you send that work to a publisher and they're like, oh, I actually like this too, you know, um, because I feel like a lot of, a lot of um, creators, they like validation. Um, I know I really like the validation I get from stuff that that I make. Um, you know, because we we all sort of want our work to sort you know be appreciated and you know people to enjoy it, people to get something out of it. You know, all of that, and it's it's just nice when you actually you know have that for something that you write um, and send off, and you know, it's yeah, it's good. How long was like the process, like sending it off to publish? <laughs> um, 
Oh God, it's a good question. Um, so I sent off a finished draft. Um, it's only about three thousand words long, mm-hmm. so it's not long at all. Um, compared to like you know a novel. Mm-hmm. Um, but I sent it off. I think it was around sort of February. Um, and then, uh, he got back to me with, you know, some suggestions. Rewrite this. Have you considered doing this? Um, and then I think there was sort of three rounds of editing. Um, so there was sort of like a major edit. So it was like, um, you know, like moving stuff around, lengthening sections, shortening sections. And then it sort of goes on to sort of more rewrites of like lines and sort of trying to bring it down to the word count. And then the final edit I sent off was a copy edit. So that was you know, really sort of nitty gritty, like punctuation, words, where paragraphs are, um, a lot of that sort of, you know, down to the brass tacks of it all really. Um, And yeah, sending that off, I sent that off about a month ago-ish. And yeah, it's being published July 15th. So yeah, Mm. the entire process took... Yeah, about four and a half months, which for the publishing industry is really quick. Um, Usually you don't get anything in sort of like under a year, which is very cool. But I think it's because a lot of the things were finished and it's sort of a lot more sort of student focused, this publisher than, you know, sort of like, you know, Bloomsbury or, you know, whoever else. Um, But yeah. The publishing industry, crazy that. It's an amazing achievement. We're going to mark that date uh, when it does get published. Um, very excited. I definitely want to give it a read, um, especially since you poured so much like hard work and effort into it as yeah. well. Be very proud. Thanks. Amazing. Okay, so, um, well, it's been lovely talking to you guys. I think we should probably wrap that up there. Um, the Yeah, Kicking Back will be back next month, and I'm sure we'll be talking and discussing about way more things. Um, but it's been lovely kind of chatting with you guys and kind of catching up on your lives. Um, and some very exciting kind of like accomplishments and um, process being made. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think that's all for now. So we will see you back here next month. See you next month. Bye. Bye. Bye.